Hello everyone, I welcome you all for this VTV Shikshana program on the course Kinematics of Machines. In this module 3, we were discussing on velocity and acceleration analysis of 4 bar mechanism and also for slider crank mechanism using analytical methods. Continuing our discussion in our previous lecture, I have introduced you people to the concept of Fredastein's approach for calculation of angular displacements and angular velocity and angular acceleration for 4 bar mechanism. And also we have derived expression to determine the angular displacement of coupler and also angular displacement of rocker that is for output link. So, in today's lecture I am going to continue from the point where I have stopped and I will be addressing velocity analysis and also acceleration analysis for 4 bar mechanism. Let us move ahead if I recall what we have discussed in our previous lecture. So, we have taken a 4 bar mechanism and we have deduced the Fredastein's equation. So, this is the 4 bar mechanism we have considered in our previous lecture and we have replaced all the link lengths by vectors, vector a, b, c and d and we have solved for horizontal and vertical components of these vectors and we have eliminated beta by squaring and adding we have eliminated beta and we have reduced the equation for phi. So, a careful observation is that while simplifying from this point, this is known as Fredastein's equation, equation number 6. If it is asked in examination to derive Fredastein's equation, if you reduce to till this point, that is enough. You know, to solve this equation, it is bit difficult for us because we have phi cos phi sin phi in LHS and also we have cos phi in RHS. So, therefore, I used trigonometric relation that is cos 2 theta and sin 2 theta and I solved further and I calculated the value of phi. So, while doing so, we have used these two substitutions and in this equation and simplified while multiplying we have missed out this negative sign instead of which we have taken positive kindly make a note. So, this should be negative. So, here we should have the negative sign kindly correct it. So, now if you simplify further, so you will get yes minus k 2 will become plus k 2 cos theta when it comes this side it will become plus k 2 cos theta and also k 2 cos constant k 2 will also will become plus plus k 2 cos theta. So, these two are the errors which we have encountered because this negative sign we have missed in our previous lecture here I wrote it as plus. So, make it as minus. So, hence a simplification will yields us the value as. So, if I take minus sign common you will get 1 minus k 2. So, this will become 1 minus k 2 and we have k 2 cos theta here so that will become minus of k 1 plus k 3 so here also we will get minus k 1 minus of 1 minus k 2 cos theta plus k 3. So, hence the final expression will become, so this will become only sign change the sign for k 2 because we have missed out instead of minus we have taken it as plus hence the expression for c will be k 1 plus k 3 minus of 1 minus k 2 cos theta. So, here we will get small correction it is minus of 1 minus k 2 cos theta. So, here this should become 1 minus k 2 that is all. So, change this sign to minus k 2. So, wherever we add k 2 
introduce minus sign this is because of the reason we add minus sign here while taking to the next page I take it as positive. So, therefore, introduce minus so therefore, wherever k 2 will come it will become minus k 2 cos theta and minus k 2 cos theta tan square phi by 2. So, accordingly I change the sign it will become plus k 2 cos theta tan square phi by 2 and it will be minus k 2 cos theta when I take it to left hand side it will become plus k 2 cos theta. So, from this point if I simplify further I will get the correct answers as cos theta is minus and k 2 is plus this is correct and here also it should be 1 minus k 2 cos theta. So, thereby this is the expression for a b and c. So, this is of the form a x square plus b x plus c. So, hence we have used the expression for Siddharth's method to find out the roots of this e equation. So, thereby I will calculate the value of displacement of output link that is for rocker. So, same procedure if I follow and eliminate phi in the first step itself I will get the expression for beta. So, beta will be given by this expression where E, D and F are listed here we should also know the notations of k 4 and k 5 which I have given if you carefully observe all these equations depends only on link lengths that is A, B, C and D and also if I know the input crank angle that is theta I can solve. So, this is the point where we have stopped from this point I will take up in today's lecture that is I will start the second topic that is velocity analysis. So, if I go for velocity analysis recalling the same thing what I have. So, we have a 4 bar mechanism and we have considered fixed link as A D, we have the input link A B, coupler B C and rocker C D output link and this is the fixed link as we know and we have defined this as link lengths as vectors A, B, C and D. We have taken this as link number 1, this as link number 2, this as link number 3. Now, in order to determine the velocity we know omega 1, omega 1 is given by 2 pi n 1 by 60 radians per second where n is speed in rpm for crank. So, crank rotation and its speed will be given for us I can calculate omega 1. In today's lecture I am interested in calculating omega 2 and omega 3 and also alpha 2 and alpha 3. How to do that? It is very simple resolve the vectors horizontally and vertically you will get the expression for displacement differentiate it you will get the expression for velocity double differentiation of displacement will give us acceleration. So, first let us recall the expressions for displacement if I recall the vectors horizontally and vertically and equate it to 0 for equilibrium I will get. So, if I resolve summation of vectors acting horizontal to 0 I will get a cos theta in our previous lecture itself we have done this a cos theta plus b cos beta minus c cos phi minus d is equal to 0 this I clearly explained in our previous lecture itself. So, similarly, so this is the equation for displacement. So, I want equation for velocity. So, therefore, if I resolve for beta, I can get the equation for omega 3 instead of which I will eliminate cos phi in today's lecture because in our previous lecture we have eliminated cos beta. In today's lecture, let me eliminate cos phi. So, if I do that, I will get C cos phi as c cos phi will become a cos theta plus b cos beta minus d correct. So, this is the expression for 
displacement but I want velocity now to get velocity differentiate this with respect to time t if I differentiate this with respect to time t I can use the original itself itself and I can eliminate by using vectors resolved horizontally and vertically instead of solving in this manner let me use the original equation itself and eliminate by coupling the equations resolved horizontally and vertically. So, differentiate this equation with respect to time t let me call this equation as let us say it as 7. So, differentiating with respect to time let me differentiate equation 7 itself with respect to time. So, if I do that I will get a is constant I will take it out differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta minus sin theta. So, differentiate uh, differentiation of theta that is d theta by dt plus b is constant differentiation of cos beta is minus sin beta again we have d beta by dt. So, here we have minus c differentiation of cos phi is minus sin phi again we have d phi by dt differentiation of constant is 0. So, this will be equated to 0. Let us call this as equation number 8. So, now we know that rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time is nothing but angular velocity. So, this can be written as angular velocity omega 1 angular velocity omega 2 and angular velocity omega 3 with reference to links 1, 2 and 3. Link 1 is crank, link 2 is coupler and link 3 is rocker that is output link. So, what we can write? We can call this as we can call this as omega 1, we can call this as omega 2 and we can call this as omega 3 that is angular velocities rate of change of displacement with respect to time is angular velocity. So, I replace it with angular velocity hence the reduced equation will be minus a sin theta omega 1 minus a sin theta omega 1 minus b sin beta omega 2 minus b sin beta omega 2. So, minus of minus is plus plus c sin phi omega 3 plus c sin phi omega 3 is equal to 0. Let us call this as equation number 9. So, this is a one set of equation what we obtained for angular velocity omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. So, similarly let me resolve the vectors vertically. So, vector directions is very very important to take positive and negative signs. So, let us have the directions properly and angles theta, beta and phi nothing big here just I recalled the diagram what I wrote in the previous lecture. Now, resolve the vectors vertically. If I resolve the vectors vertically, I will get a sin theta, b sin beta and minus c sin phi correct. So, what I will get if I do resolving summation of vertical components to 0, I will get a sin theta plus b sin beta minus c sin phi is equal to 0. So, this is the displacement equation correct. So, I want acceleration. So, therefore, differentiate this with respect to time. So, if I differentiate with respect to time, I will get the acceleration angular velocity equation in terms of omega as differentiation of sin theta is plus cos theta. So, I will get a cos theta d theta by dt is omega 1 just now I have explained. So, d theta by dt is omega 1 plus we have b cos beta 
omega 2 that is d beta by dt is omega 2 now minus c cos phi omega 3 is equal to 0 this is equation number 10 so now my aim is to determine omega 2 and omega 3 we have two equations equation 9 and equation 10 we have two unknowns omega 2 and omega 3 now I should solve two equations with two unknowns equation 9 and equation 10 are two equations omega 2 and omega 3 are two unknowns so what we should do from this point is is that I should eliminate omega 2 and find what is the value of omega 3 is a one set I should eliminate omega 3 and find what is the value of omega 2 is the another set let me demonstrate one and you do yourself for another one but I will give the answer for one more what I should do is that let me eliminate omega 2 you know to eliminate omega 2 equation 9 should be multiplied with cos beta and equation 10 should be multiplied with sin beta so if I do that what I will get I will get so we should use small letters be careful so what I will get is that b cos beta sin beta omega 2 b cos beta sin beta omega 2 so thereby I can eliminate these two so hence in order to eliminate omega 2 multiply this equation throughout by cos beta and multiply this equation that is equation 10 throughout by sin beta so that is you have to eliminate omega 2 and to find omega 3 so to find omega 3 what I should do is that multiply equation 9 with we have sin beta multiply it with cos beta and multiply equation 10 with sin beta if I do that what I will get multiply this by cos beta minus a omega 1 minus a omega 1 sin theta cos beta minus b omega 2 minus b omega 2 sin beta cos beta plus c omega 3 plus c omega 3 sin phi cos beta is equal to 0 so similarly if I multiply equation 10 with sin beta I will get a sin theta sorry a cos theta omega 1 sin beta a cos theta omega 1 sin beta let me write it properly so that I can cancel off here itself a omega 1 cos theta sin beta b omega 2 cos beta sin beta plus b omega 2 sin beta cos beta c omega 3 cos phi minus c omega 3 cos phi sin beta is equal to 0 so now you can observe these two equations I can cancel of b omega to sin beta cos beta b omega to sin beta cos beta so that is if I add these two equations if I add these two equations I can eliminate this one so now if I add this what I will get a omega 1 a omega 1 sin beta cos theta sin beta cos theta minus cos beta sin theta correct so therefore I can write this as so I will take a omega 1 common if I take a omega 1 common I will get sin beta cos theta minus cos beta sin theta so that is I can write it as sin of 
beta minus theta and here it is cancelled off if I take c omega 3 as common if I take c omega 3 as common I can write it as let me take minus c omega 3 as common if I take minus c omega 3 as common I left it with sin beta cos phi minus cos beta sin phi that is of the form sin of beta minus phi this must be equal to 0. So, therefore, I can get the value of omega 3 hence the value of omega 3 will be so therefore, omega 3 will become a sin of beta minus theta a sin of beta minus theta divided by c sin of beta minus phi into omega 1 hope you have understood the concept. So, just we have formulated the vectors resolution along horizontal and vertical directions we have obtained the displacement equations differentiate the di displacement equations to get the angular velocity equations we had displacement equation differentiated to get the angular velocity equation let us take it as one equation similarly you resolve vertically and differentiate it you will get the angular velocity equation keep it as another equation if you observe we have two equations with two unknowns first what I did I want to eliminate omega 2. So, therefore, here cos beta is missing here sin beta is missing. So, therefore, multiply equation 9 by cos beta equation 10 by sin beta thereby I can eliminate omega 2 solve for omega 3 that is what I have done here. So, we got value of omega 3. So, similarly what you people should do is that you eliminate omega 3 you know to eliminate omega 3 what you should do multiply equation 9 with cos phi equation 10 with sin phi and add those two equations you will eliminate omega 3 and find the value of omega 2. If you do that you will get the answer as that is to find omega 2 multiply equation 9 and equation 10. by equation 9 should be multiplied with cos phi equation 10 should be multiplied with sin phi that is cos phi and sin phi and adding which adding the resultant equation equation will get the value of omega 2 as omega 2 will be minus a times sin of phi minus theta divided by b sin of phi minus beta. omega 1. So, this is about the angular velocity of transmission link or coupler. So, thereby we have done velocity analysis. So, in velocity analysis we have calculated what is the angular velocity of output link or rocker and what is the velocity of transmission link or coupler. So, this is the expression a careful observation will reveals that it depends only on the angular displacements theta phi beta and the link length a and b omega 1 is already known omega 1 is 2 pi n by 60 where n is rpm of crank. So, with this we have done velocity analysis moving ahead for acceleration analysis that is case 3 in 4 bar mechanism analysis that is acceleration. As I said you know to obtain acceleration I should differentiate velocity term again or you can differentiate 
displacement equation twice. So just now we have derived the acceleration equation sorry velocity equation let me use velocity equation once I differentiate velocity equation I will get acceleration. So therefore recall velocity equations that is equation 9 and 10 recall velocity equations 9 and 10. So if I recall velocity equations 9 and 10 we have equation 9 for angular velocity based on vectors resolved horizontally that is a sin theta omega 1 minus b sin beta omega 2 minus a sin theta omega 1 minus a sin theta omega 1 minus b sin beta omega 2 plus c sin phi omega 3 is equal to 0 is equation 9 coming for equation 10 you have a cos theta omega 1 plus b cos beta omega 2 minus c cos phi omega 3 is equal to 0. So this is equation number 10 you can verify. So equation 10 a cos theta omega 1 b cos beta omega 2 minus c cos phi omega 3 minus c cos phi omega 3 correct. So now if you differentiate these two equation equation 9 and equation 10 you are going to get the acceleration equations. So let me differentiate equation 9 and 10 with respect to time. So let me differentiate equation 9 with respect to time. So differentiating equation 9 with respect to time t. So differentiate this equation with respect to time t. If I differentiate this expression what I am going to get? So we have product rule here u into v. So uv rule is known first function differentiation of second plus second function differentiation of first. So apply uv rule and differentiate if I do that minus a. So minus a we have sin theta omega 1. So product rule if I apply I will get first function differentiation of second is differentiation of angular velocity is angular acceleration. The notation for angular acceleration is alpha. First function differentiation of second plus second function differentiation of first differentiation of sin theta is cos theta into d theta by dt is omega. So it will become omega square. So similarly we have b sin beta omega 2 minus b sin beta differentiation of omega 2 is alpha 2 plus I will keep omega 2 as it is differentiation of sin beta is cos beta d beta by dt is omega 2 hence it will become omega 2 square. Next we have plus c times sin, b, sin phi omega 3 sin phi omega 3 first function sin phi differentiation of omega 3 will become alpha 3 plus second function is omega 3 differentiation of first differentiation of sin phi is cos phi differentiation of phi with respect to time is omega 3 hence it will become omega 3 square. So this must be equal to 0. Let me call this as equation number 11. Now similarly differentiate equation 10 with respect to time that is differentiating equation 10 with respect to time. So if I differentiate equation 10 with respect to time you will get again this is of the product rule u into v a omega 1 cos theta is what we have. So therefore I will get a times differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta let me use it as second term first function is cos theta second function is omega 1 differentiation will become alpha 1 
plus so differentiation will become minus so hence I will get minus omega 1 square sin theta is what I will get so similarly plus b cos beta alpha 2 minus omega 2 square sin beta is what I will get and minus c of cos phi alpha 3 minus omega 3 square sin phi so this is what I will get this must be equal to 0 right so cos theta omega 1 is cos theta alpha 1 minus omega 1 square sin theta correct so now I should solve equation 11 and 12 to get the angular acceleration repeat the same procedure what we have done for equation 9 and 10 for equation 9 and 10 we had two equations with two unknowns omega 2 and omega 3 we have solved it to find omega 2 and omega 3 now for equation 11 and 12 we have two equations with two unknowns in equation 11 the unknowns are alpha 2 and alpha 3 in equation 12 the unknowns are alpha 2 and alpha 3 so now repeat the same procedure what we have done that is express or try to eliminate alpha 2 from equation 11 and 12 add and find the value of alpha 3 try to eliminate alpha 3 and find the value of alpha 2 that is solve two equations with two unknowns equation 11 and equation 12 are two equations the two unknowns are alpha 2 and alpha 3 alpha 2 and alpha 3 if you carefully observe all other values are known to us a b c are link lengths constants we know that theta beta and phi are angular displacement that we have already learnt in our lecture 1 of this Fredersteins equation and coming for the values of alpha alpha 1 is known that is acceleration of crank or input link the only unknowns are alpha 2 and alpha 3 so solve these two equations so solving equation 11 and 12 solving two equations that is 11 and 12 for two unknowns for two unknowns that is alpha 2 and alpha 3 we get alpha 2 as alpha 2 will become minus a alpha 1 minus a alpha 1 sin of phi minus theta sin of phi minus theta plus a omega 1 square cos of phi minus theta cos of phi minus theta plus b omega 2 square cos of phi minus beta minus c omega 3 square so whole this thing should be divided by b sin of phi minus beta so this is the equation for alpha 2 so similarly if you solve you will get the expression for alpha 3 also alpha 3 is turning out to be minus a alpha 1 sin of beta minus theta plus a omega 1 square cos of beta minus theta plus b omega 2 square b omega 2 square minus c omega 3 square cos of phi minus beta cos of phi minus beta whole this thing must be divided by c 
sin of phi minus beta. So, this completes the expression for angular velocity as well as for angular acceleration. So, we have derived the expression for angular velocity and angular acceleration in today's lecture that is we have taken the 4 bar mechanism, we have taken the 4 bar mechanism, we have resolved the, uh, we, have we have considered the link lengths as vectors, we have resolved it horizontally and vertically and the summation of horizontal and vertical components must be equal to 0. So, therefore, we have used it and obtained the two expressions for displacement and we have differentiated the displacement equation to get the angular velocity equation. So, we have solved two angular velocity equation that is equation 9 and equation 10 for two unknowns omega 2 and omega 3 and we got the expression for omega 3 and omega 2. So, similarly we have differentiated the velocity equation 9 and 10 with respect to time to get the acceleration equation. So, we got acceleration equation 11 and 12 we have solved you should solve these two equations for two unknowns alpha 2 and alpha 3 you will get the value of alpha 2 and alpha 3 as shown in this slide. So, this completes our Fredersteins method of determining angular displacement, angular velocity and angular acceleration. To solve numerical problems we should know these formulas what we have derived in our previous lecture as well as in today's lecture that is you should thorough with lecture number 5 and 6 whatever derivations we have done in these two lectures, lectures 5 and lecture 6 should be clearly known then only we can solve numerical problem on 4 bar mechanism based on Fredersteins approach. So, for which you should kindly go through these two lectures and list out the formulas what we have derived. So, using which we can solve numerical problems. So, hope you people will go through these two lectures and recall all the formulas what we have derived using which in our next lecture I will take up a numerical problem on 4 bar mechanism to determine the angular velocities and angular acceleration for an 4 bar mechanism that is all from today's lecture thank you all.